Hi, this is Darren with Crazy Minnow Studio. And in this video, I'm going to be going over Web Audio URLs, which is a new add-on for our Amplitude for WebGL asset. And on our website, you can uh, find a blog post for Web Audio URLs simply by going to our search page typing in web audio and then you get a link to the blog page and this is a very basic introduction to the asset add-on and the real meat and potatoes to the documentation is at this link right here that is a very detailed document discussing the API and uh, hopefully pretty much everything you'll need to know is in this document but we're doing this uh, this little video here just to uh, give a visual on uh, what this is all about first off you'll see in the requirements that there really aren't any requirements for web audio URLs itself it doesn't really require anything not even amplitude but the examples package that is also available on the downloads site does have some requirements and uh, the first being salsa with randomize and and now this bear this in mind this is also only if you're going to load up the demo scene so it uh, it does require salsa with randomize it requires amplitude for WebGL and also requires amplitude salsa. And it looks like there's a little bit of formatting problem going on here on the documents page that I'll need to fix. So that being the case, we just did a video on using salsa with amplitude and the new amplitude salsa add-on. And uh, so we'll be reusing that project. And I have that here. The first thing we'll need to do is go ahead and pull in our web audio URLs add-on framework and it only consists of two files you can see they're going to go under add-ons in amplitude and uh, it's just a readme file and then the main api and then next let's go ahead and bring in the examples package and you'll see that that is going to put the examples under amplitudes examples folder and under a new directory web audio URLs and it has three files and the first file is going to be the demo scene and then there is a, a single action example file and then a batch mode example file so we'll go into the differences between those let's import okay you can see we have our two files for the main API package and if you know what you want to do this is pretty much all you need and then there's the examples files and so first off let's go ahead and load up this demo scene and you'll see we've got boxhead 2 in here I think the one that's actually uh, loaded up to the web has the regular boxhead that comes with salsa uh, but you can download the boxhead 2 from the salsa downloads area so it's got our model and we also have this uh, GUI UI button here that is linked up to this action game object. And then there's the script that's on there, the web audio action example, and it's, it's uh, linked to the toggle fetch. And we're going to show that right now. Before we do that, let's take a look at Boxhead. He's already configured with salsa and randomize and the same way we had him before with the camera being a look target. Now in this example here, I have actually separated everything out. So the audio source is on a different game object. The web audio URLs processor, which is the API, is on its own game object. The action uh, example script is on its own and also the batch mode. And the reason I did this is just to show the flexibility that these things don't have to all be on the same game object. We do have this audio source turned off. We don't want it playing or doing anything uh, accidentally. And then the audio source that we've got configured over here to feed into Amplitude, we also have turned off. We don't want it to play on Awake. And the reason for that is because uh, we're going to fire that uh, on our own. And we basically just have a, a Boolean that is set when we turn it to true. It will immediately turn itself to false and fall through to uh, do a little bit of processing. Okay, so let's take a look at the web audio action script example that we've included. Basically, it's really simple. There are a couple of requirements for using the web audio URL processor API. And that is to actually make it, it. So this is for an action, a single action request is to actually make the request. And, and this can be done in a bunch of different ways. But the basic flow is to first call this get audio clip and we'll be passing an audio URL. I'll explain that in just a second, but it's a custom type. And we're also going to be passing two delegate callbacks here, one for success, which is the first one, and the second for failed. And these can be called 
anything you want. We just call them on success and on failed in this example for simplicity. So you have to define that. So what are those going to do? And we do that here in our on success method. And then we also do that here in our on failed method. So in on success, once we've called this, we do have a reference to our web audio URLs processor. And uh, we've defined that up here and we have grabbed that in start. So you'll see that it's right there. And we've also grabbed an audio source because in our on success, we're going to go ahead and play that audio source as soon as the web audio URLs processor API returns that asynchronously to us. And that's what these callbacks are for. So we'll pass this audio URL and that includes a URL, which is a string and a type. And we can see that in, in the actual web audio URL script. We have two types up here. One is audio URL and one is notification. So the audio URL is basically defining a string and an audio type as the audio URL. And this is a Unity audio type. So you'll need to pass that for the type of audio that you are requesting from the web. And that has to be appropriate to whatever project and platform you're working on. And you can find that information in Unity's documentation. We're creating a new audio URL because basically what we're going to be passing when we turn this fetch boolean to true is a string and then an audio type, which is going to be wave. So once we pass that, we give it the uh, success callback and the failed callback. Uh, when the processor API comes back, it is successful in uh, processing that URL, that audio URL we've passed it. It will return an audio clip to us asynchronously. So once it's done all of its processing, it, it will return it. We don't have to do anything but just sit and wait. And, uh, and by wait, I don't mean we have to wait an update or anything. It will simply call back this delegate once it's done. And what we've done is we've said, okay, okay, well, we'll take that processed clip, we'll assign it to our audio source clip, and then we'll just play. So as soon as the uh, web audio URL processor API is finished processing the audio URL we've passed to it, it's going to go ahead and play. And so let's take a look at that. All right, so let's start up, and we and we can actually fire that in two different methods. I forgot to show that here. So the uh, toggle fetch was what our button was linked to, and basically all that does is say, okay, fetch is now true, and then that means that in update, fetch is going to be true. It's going to come in here. It's going to immediately turn it to false. It's going to call this audio clip method that we've got here. This technically, this line could be substituted here uh, as long as we, you know, properly formed our audio URL and uh, uh, you know we don't have to actually call another method to do that this is completely up to you how you want to do it but we've set this up here so it's just a little bit easier to follow okay so now let's go back and take a peek so we can do it from here and we can also do it from here because this uh, in the inspector is just going to toggle the uh, the boolean itself first we'll do it from here ah but the strawberries that's that's where I had them they laughed at me and made jokes and you can see that that happens actually pretty quick. So that's going out to the web. It's saying, OK, uh, here's my uh, URL. Uh, go ahead and get this. Link it all up. That's all asynchronous. The processor API handles that for you. And then once it's got it converted into an audio clip for you, it returns it. And in our script, our demo script here, we immediately play it. So we'll just trigger it from the button to show that we can do the same thing. Ah, but the strawberries, that's, that's where I had them. They laughed at me and made jokes. And that basically did the same thing. It did it all over again. So it went out and fetched that URL, created an audio clip from it, and then passed it back to our delegate callback. Now, the fail callback, uh, this I, I didn't quite cover this. It, it includes this uh, custom notification type here. And in that, uh, we have defined a type, an enum type of info, warning, or error, and then also a string that includes the clip name, uh, which is basically the URL that you passed. And then uh, we also have a message, which is the actual error or information that's passed back. This is pretty flexible. You can handle it however you want. Uh, if it is an error, uh, it will come back with that error notification type. And you could debug log that out to the console as an error. Or you could even do it just as a log or not do anything at all. I mean, you could just as easily 
get rid of all this stuff and, and just ignore all of the messages that come back. It's only going to notify you when there's an error from the API for this particular implementation. Let's go ahead and take a look at the batch mode now. So in the batch, uh, the basic idea behind this is that you would submit all of your URLs at once. That allows the processor the ability to go ahead and convert all of those audio URLs to audio clips, Unity audio clips, and then it will save them in a queue. And then you can go and freely pluck uh, items off of that queue as needed. That allows you to do it in a fashion that there is no gap. So let's say that it did take a little while for this stuff to happen. Then you, uh, you can go ahead and pre-process all of your audio URLs and get them in the queue when you need them. So if you had a dialogue system and you wanted to make sure one thing played right after the other, this might be the method that you want to use. You'll notice that we've got an array of strings and bring up the script for this. It has a, an array of strings that are the audio URLs and then it has the audio type, which it is assuming that all of these are going to be the same type. And uh, if not, I mean, you know, the, again, this is just a, an example. You can handle this however you want. We're grabbing a reference to our web audio URL processor, uh, affectionately known as our whoop. And uh, we're also getting reference to the audio source so that we can play these as soon as we have requested them. And, uh, and then we have some bulls uh, so that, again, we can control our little demo scene uh, from the inspector just like we did with the first one. We have a play, which will actually go out and try to grab items from the queue, and it will keep grabbing items from the queue until the queue is empty. And by items, I mean audio clips. And then we have the load, which will load the audio URL processor with audio URLs. You can push these as fast as you want. They will be queued up themselves and then processed. Uh, you don't have to wait until one's processed before you can send another one. Uh, if you have several, you can just loop through this. You do send them one at a time, but uh, that offers the flexibility of sending multiple or one, and then you just kind of load the queue up. And then this option here uh, will actually clear the queue. And this is just a demo to show how we can uh, basically clear that queue if we're not going to use those audio clips anymore. Now, once you do pull them from the audio processor's queue, they don't exist in this queue anymore. It will actually pop them off in a first in, first out process. So if you've sent uh, five things to it, the first one you'll get back is the first thing you sent, then the second, second thing, and, and so forth. So basically, th it works this way. We will push our URLs to the queue, and we've defined another method here within our example file to do that. But the actual API call is in queue audio URL, and it expects to get an audio that custom type audio URL and only the callback uh, for failed so we're not expecting to get anything back on success because the web audio URL processor is going to be batching these up and it's it's storing them in its own audio queue and it will only send them when you request them so the first thing we would do is push an audio URL to the web audio URL processor the whoop and uh, we'll do that by enqueuing the audio URL. Then we want to make sure we have our success and failure callbacks defined, just like we, we did with the single action. And the success will be expecting an audio clip, and then the failed will be expecting a custom notification type. Now, the one additional thing that we're going to have here, since we're not immediately getting anything back once we push it to the queue, to the audio processor, is a function to get the audio clip from the web audio URL processor. So what that looks like is basically this call here, this uh, whoop dot get batched audio clip. And, uh, and then all we're doing is passing a callback to our success and a callback to our failed. So what it will do is it will say, hey, Q, do you have any audio clips? And if it does, it will pop one off and it will, if it's successful, it will send it back. If there aren't any uh, audio clips in the queue, then it will uh, eventually time out and send a message saying there's nothing there. 
And so the reason that we've got this as a slight timeout is because if you've requested something and it's uh, you know immediately after you've processed it or sent it to be processed, since it's all asynchronous, it could take a second or two for the processor to actually get that clip from the web and convert it to an audio clip. Now, if that fails, then it will make this delegate call back here. So let's see that in action. First off, if we uh, we'll pull up the console. So we, I've got it set up to to give us some messages and whatnot. So if we if we hit play, then in update, it's going to set play to true. And then if the audio source is not currently playing, it's going to go ahead and say, okay, is it first it's a debug informational message here that it says it's getting a clip from the queue and it will tell us how many are in the queue right now. And then it will go ahead and call this method here, get audio clip, and that will pass this to the WUP. And we could, again, just as easily have put this statement in here. And uh, so it'll pop a clip off if there is one. And if not, it will get the uh, informational message. And then once we're done with that, we'll check. This is another API call here. What's the queue count? If the queue count is zero, then we're not going to play anymore. We'll just turn this to false. So as we're going through here, it'll keep grabbing items from the queue uh, until there aren't any left. So let's do that real quick. We'll go ahead and try it. We haven't actually loaded anything to the queue, so we'll see what happens here. It says there's nothing in the queue. It's trying to get one, and basically it's saying there is no queue. Uh, one has not been created. So the Web Audio URL processor will not just create a queue by default. It only will create that queue if you've actually pushed an audio URL to be queued. All right, so let's go ahead and load up these audio URLs in here. So what that will do is uh, it says, all right, our queue count currently is zero and we're pushing three. So now if we go back and play. Everything's clear now. What a dirty, filthy mind you got. Let's call it quits and pack up and leave. It cycled through each of those in the queue. First, well, you know, if there were three items and two, then one, and then it was done. And let's go ahead and load up another set. And now we see we, ha we still have zero, or well, we had zero in the queue and we pushed three. And then now, if I do this again, it'll push those same three, but it'll it'll keep adding them. So there will be six this time. And so it started out with three in the queue, and it pushed three more. We can also clear the queue. So if I clear the queue, then it's basically going to wipe it all out. And you would use this if, say, you had an NPC, you already queued up all the dialogue for him, and then you left the scene for whatever or area. You don't need to store that in memory. You can go ahead and clear the queue. Now the queue count is zero. It was six, and now it's zero. So let's go ahead and try to play again. And we'll see that we're getting an item from the queue, and it took a little bit. And then it says, nope, there's nothing there. Queue count zero. And so it didn't fail. Nothing failed. It's just saying that in the time that it went out there to look for it, nothing appeared in the queue. So let's load it back up, and then we'll load it back up again. So now we have six items. And then if we play, it will start playing those six items, and it'll be six, five, four. Everything's clear now. So what six, a dirty, five. filthy mind you've now, got. We can go ahead and clear and the queue and while that's happening. And we see that it's it said, oh, there's nothing in the queue anymore. And we got that same message that we got before. So again, uh, the example files that are included for batch and single action mode are only included as a typical use option and uh, it's not going to fit every option and it's not meant to it's just meant to show you how to implement the web audio url processor api and of course any processing that you want to do based on the on failed or on success is your own and uh, how you call the uh, the actual implementation for a single action or a batch action is entirely up to you and uh, this is just an example of how to do it. I hope that was helpful. And as always, we look forward to seeing what you create. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.